Alright. So this is Master Quest Forest Temple. You can recognize it right away by the presence of all these extra Waltalas on the vines, as well as the lack of Wolfos here in the opening room. If you go up the left side of these vines, there are no Waltalas to get in the way. To get over to the switch, you'll have to deal with this big Sculptula somehow. Any projectile should do. You can use a Deku Nut and run underneath. And if you have a sword item, you can just go around the Sculptula with a Jump Slash. The switch spawns the first small key chest. If keys are in dungeons and tokens aren't shuffled, then that chest will always contain a small key. If you take a step forward and use a Deku Nut, you can stun all three of these Sculptulas at once. And then the first gold Sculptula token is up here on this wall. If you have the Song of Time, or you're in here as child since the Song of Time block is not there as child, you want to start by going straight for the room below the Stalfos that you normally have to fight for the bow. As in vanilla, you have to defeat the lower enemies in order for the Stalfos up top to spawn. You can still progress past those Stalfos even without the Song of Time or child access, but you'll have to jump down from above to kill these Wolfos, and then either Ferrara's Wind back up, or save Warp out and walk through the entire dungeon again. If you do that though, you should know that the small key chest itself is not in logic, since after fighting the Stalfos, the ceiling falls down and blocks the hole, preventing you from getting back into the lower room if you forget to open the chest while you're there. In Master Quest, Access to both co courtyards from the main room requires you to shoot an eye switch. If you have a bow, then let's start with the east courtyard. First, turn around and get a sculpture token here on the door frame. Next, there's a small key chest at the top of the vines. We usually play with the trick in logic to reach these vines with just hookshot, but for some reason if that trick is not enabled, you have some other options. You could just use the long shot to get up there, but also, if you go up onto the door frame, you can go across some Song of Time blocks. Either the Song of Time or the Hover Boots can be used to reach the second block, and from there you can hookshot to the vines. From up there, there's a trick you can do to reach the lower small key chest with the hover boots. If you get some good momentum, you can roll out in order to avoid taking fall damage, but otherwise, you can use a jump slash to get a bit more distance, and then it's easy. The logical way to get to this chest is to use the long shot, perhaps from standing on one of the railings next to the door that you came into the room from. And the long shot, you can also hook that chest directly from by the upper chest, though that does take fall damage. Now sometimes you might have to climb these Song of Time blocks to get up to the Falling Ceiling Room. It's a good idea in Key Sanity as it allows you to complete the dungeon out of logic with two fewer keys, but occasionally, yeah, it could be required for a chest in that room. After playing Song of Time the first time, using the Hover Boots, you can climb the ledge and skip playing the song a second time. But also, if you stand right about here, you can get both Song of Time blocks into place with a single use of Song of Time. Next, let's go through the well. Typically, you would lower the water in the well by shooting that eye switch. But I'm going to show you a couple of things with the water still up. You can open this small key chest underwater, hookshot the chest, and mash A to get it open. That is considered a glitch under Glitchless Restricted, but Randomizer allows you to do it. And from here, you could go back to the main room if you're not getting Skulltulas, but if you're getting Skulltulas, then head through the well and get the one on this gate. And then you can climb the vines for another one at the top. It's possible that you might find your way into this west courtyard from one of the other entrances and need to cross through from here directly to the east courtyard. So I'd like to take a moment to point out a few ways you can do that. 
Very rarely, if you have the fire arrows, you can burn these webs and go through that room up there. I won't bother to show you what's in that room up there because it's pretty uneventful. You can also dive through the well with either gold scale or iron boots, but also you can long shot the vines at the bottom and then swim under the ceiling. That's in logic, but there's a trick you can do with just the hookshot, where if you hookshot the very lowest, rightmost part of these vines, you can quickly swim under the ceiling and go through that way. Now let's head for the block room, but first, we have to take out a Stelphos in this really cramped hallway. If you have the bomb chew and the hook shot, there's a trick you can do to skip this whole puzzle. Turn left and send a bomb chew directly up the center of this wall, and that'll hit a switch to raise some hook shot targets and spawn some glass blocks that you can use as a shortcut to the top. While the bomb chew is going up, you can head around the back of this wall to get the final Sculptula token. But wait for the bomb chew to finish hitting the switch before picking it up, or you'll be risking soft lock. But I'll suppose I'll show you how to solve this puzzle with strength, in case it ends up being necessary. If you have the hovers, it should save a little time to go across the front like this, since you can push the block three times to squeeze past it, instead of having to pull the block the whole way out to get to this ladder. After climbing the ladder, continue by pulling the next block back six times. But if you have the hook shot and bow, or the long shot, you can hit the switch from here to again skip actually having to solve this block puzzle. But otherwise, let's jump down and use our strength to push the final two blocks into place. And you'll probably want to hit the switch once you're up there so that you can use the shortcut later. If you're keeping track of the logic, you should know that both of these next two locked doors require an extra key, because right now it's possible to reach the locked door at the end of the falling ceiling room, and so you could technically waste a key there. I should also point out that this twisted hallway that we're about to go through, that is a permanent flag in Master Quest, unlike a vanilla where it's a temporary flag, and so if you were to use Furrow's Wind somehow in here, uh, the state of the hallway is not going to be saved as part of Furrow's Wind which is sometimes good and sometimes bad, depending on how you're using it. That's the boss key chest. Now let's drop down and kill this floor master. In the next dead, in the next room, is a re-dead you have to kill to spawn a small key chest. Head through this door, back to the block room, and hit this switch to twist the hallway. Because this switch is visible through the glass block, it actually is fully in logic to jump slash that switch through the block. So you could be expected to go from the block room into the west courtyard, even if you can't solve the block puzzle or don't have a key to unlock the door at the top. If you have the hover boots, then you can use those to get in front of the switch and jump slash into it. Ignore that. It's really not that hard. And also, if you have any means of hitting that switch at the top, you can use the glass blocks that spawn to jump in front of the switch from there. The timing for the jump slash is a bit later than you might expect, too early and you'll recoil off instead of hitting the switch.
Once you've hit the switch, you can hook shot up to the door. Or if you don't have the hook shot, there are some tricks you can do to get up there without it. You can climb up and do the jump slash recoil, which utilizes momentary anti-gravity, which is allowed in randomizer but banned in glitchless restricted. Or you can do the precise jump that they do in glitchless, which is what I'll show here now. But, if you have the hook shot, there's a trick you can do to just get right up there with the switch. If you stand in the right spot, you can see that there is a gap between the glass block and the wall. You can shoot the hook shot right through that gap and hit the target on the ceiling. Now with all that explained, let's head up through that twisted hallway and do the Poe and Stelfos fights. This here is the map chest. And this is the compass chest. If you have a fire source, the best way to handle this room is to just use it on the frozen eye. Even if you have to jump over there and use dins. Otherwise, you have to put the box on the switch, shoot the eye through the torch, shoot the eye through the torch, and then take the box back off of the switch in order to exit the room. In the falling ceiling room, 
You want to head for the back right switch to spawn a chest. If you weren't able to get the chest on the outside ledge in the courtyard before, you will also have to hit this other switch to open the door out to that. If you open this chest and still don't have the final key that you need, it must be in the chest on that outside ledge. If you have either Song of Time or Furora's Wind, you can quickly get back up from that chest, but otherwise you might have to go through the entire dungeon again. Now let's take out the green Poe as normal. If you still need a chest on the outside ledge but it doesn't have a key, you'll want to get it by backtracking through the falling ceiling room after dealing with the green Poe, which I'll show now. If you've already got that chest though, you can just head back to the main room the normal way. If the chest on that ledge and the chest in the falling ceiling room both have keys and you can't get either of them early, it's possible that you could get key locked out of getting this far into the dungeon. When getting this chest, be very careful not to accidentally jump the whole way down. Now defeat the purple Poe, so you can ride the elevator to the basement. I don't really know what the most optimal way to solve this puzzle is, so we'll just keep rotating it counterclockwise like we normally do. First, there's a chest here. If you want, you can jump slash this first switch. And the final side room here has nothing of value in it, so you can completely skip going in there. And then to open the final gate, there's an eye switch hidden up on this wall. And now all that's left is to take out Phantom Ganon, and you'll be done with Master Quest Forest Temple. A master class of level design if I've ever seen one. Good luck out there. Also don't watch this fight. You already know how to screw up this fight, you don't need to see me do it.